Genesis 41, 37 through 57. Devotional Focus Verse. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Genesis 41, 38. If God is controlling our lives, those around us should be able to see that there is something different about us. This was true in the life of the young man who worked with Chick Beasley many years ago. Chick testified, I was just a railer and a blasphemer when I came to God. I operated a big saw in a manufacturing plant. We worked on a bonus system. The faster you could put that material through, the more you made. I was pretty hard to get along with. I used to curse, rant, rave, throw things around, and act like a fool. A young man, 16 years of age, from the Apostolic Faith Church came to work across the machine from me, and the life he lived convicted me of my sins. As I watched him day after day, his life preached a silent sermon to me. One day I went around the machine and asked him, What church do you belong to? He said, I don't belong to any church. I'm just a Christian. Then he began to tell me a wonderful story. He told how God could come into my life and save me. He told me about the apostolic faith people, and I attended a service for just one purpose, to see what God would do for me. Chick prayed and God saved him and changed his heart, because a young man had the Spirit of God on his life. In our text today, God's Spirit was evident in the life of Joseph. Upon hearing Joseph's plan for the preservation of Egypt, Pharaoh uttered the words recorded in the focus verse. How remarkable that even a pagan ruler could identify the source of Joseph's wisdom. And the Spirit of God clearly continued to help Joseph, giving him the needed knowledge and organizational skills to implement the 14-year national survival plan he had detailed to Pharaoh. Whatever our roles in life, we want the Spirit of God to shine through us, motivating kind words, merciful acts, a compassionate spirit, and wise advice. Perhaps we are facing challenges that seem way beyond our ability to handle. On the other hand, maybe the day ahead seems mundane and completely insignificant. Whatever the case, God's Spirit can permeate our days and everything in them. Are you letting His Spirit shine out of you in every endeavor, no matter how large or small? Think through a typical day in your life. Mentally review your interaction with family, co-workers, classmates, or other associates. What can you do to make sure that each of them will recognize you as a person in whom the Spirit of God is? Background Information because of Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams, as described in the previous portion of this chapter, Pharaoh and his servants decided that Joseph was the person to supervise the amassing and distribution of food stores. Joseph was 30 years old at this time and had been in Egypt for 13 years. In the space of one day, he was elevated from prisoner to second in command of the entire nation of Egypt. Even though the Egyptians were idolaters, they had known of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for many years. Pharaoh realized that it was this God who had revealed both his dream and its meaning to Joseph. Pharaoh commanded that the Egyptians give Joseph respect and follow his directions. This authority was denoted in several ways. Joseph was given Pharaoh's signet ring, which was used to sign documents by impressing it into clay or wax. He was clothed in fine linen, and the gold chain on his neck was an official badge of his position. He was assigned the second chariot for public occasions, and the people were to show him honor. Joseph was given the name Zaphonath Punia. Various meanings for this Egyptian name have been suggested by historians, including 
the one who furnishes nourishment to the land, abundance of life, and revealer of secrets. Joseph was also given the daughter of a priest as his wife. This marriage elevated Joseph's social standing because the priests were the top caste in the country. The city of On, which the Greeks named Heliopolis, still exists today as a suburb of Cairo. Joseph had two sons, whose names were also significant. Manasseh, one who forgets, and Ephraim, double fruit. One author says, The life of Joseph as the prime minister of Egypt was a very splendid one. His palaces would consist of numberless rooms opening into spacious courts where palms, sycamores, and acacia trees grew in rare luxuriance. Rare perfumes rose from vases of gold and bronze and alabaster, and the foot sank deep in carpets covering the floors. Although Joseph lived in luxury, had a wife who was the daughter of an idolatrous priest, ruled in a heathen country, and was surrounded by people with no belief in the true God, he maintained his faith in God. Pharaoh's dreams were fulfilled, and Joseph organized the storage of grain as the land brought forth by handfuls. Eventually, so much was stored that they lost count of the exact amount. When the famine began, Joseph sold of this store to the Egyptians and also to foreigners. Conclusion We want others to see by our attitudes and actions that the Spirit of God is in us. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath and he gave him to wife Asenath the daughter of Potiphar a priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much, until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath the daughter of Potiphar a priest of Onbear unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil, and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness, that was in the land of Egypt, were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses, and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all lands.